Hi, beautiful friends and bookish fam. My name is Brittany. This is Rescues and Reads. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad to have you here. And if you are a returning subscriber, I always appreciate you so much. Thank you for returning for another video. Today it is time to do my December book of the month predictions. All right, y'all, in full transparency, I have a feeling that this video is going to be a hot mess because first I'm about to recap how I did in November for my book of the month predictions and I didn't do well, in all honesty. Book of the month really did some random selections. They had uh, some pre-releases, some post-releases, some releases that I had never even really heard of before. And so I was just completely off the mark with a lot of my November book of the month predictions. And I honestly have a feeling that book of the month has the possibility to be the same just because there are not a lot of really notable releases coming out in the month of December. And so I have a feeling that we are likely going to see some book of the month selections that came out in past months or that are coming out in January. I honestly do not have a lot of strong feelings about the books that I'm going to talk to you about today for my book of the month predictions. So it really is anybody's guess how this is going to go. But of course, as always, we are going to start with a recap of how I did for the past month book of the month predictions. Like I said, I did not do well. So for the month of November, book of the month had six curated monthly selections. Out of those six, only one was a book that I discussed actively in my November book of the month predictions. And that was a Again and Again by Jonathan Evison. One of the books that was featured was a book called This Spells Love by Kate Robb. It is a romance and it is a early release that is actually coming out in December. Y'all know that I only focus on books that are coming out during the month in question. So when I'm making these prediction videos, I'm never focusing on books that are coming out in a future month or a past month. And that is just to limit my selections and narrow the pool. So This Spells Love was a pre-release from December. And then they also had Jasmine Ward's newest book, Let Us Descend, which I believe was one that actually came out in October, if I'm remembering correctly. So that was a past month's release. Now, the other three books, as far as I'm aware, were November releases. However, two of them were not on my radar at all. One of them was called The Helsinki Affair, which was a spy thriller. The other was The Last Love Note, which was a contemporary. And this third one is actually one that has been getting a lot of buzz. It was definitely on my radar in terms of what was coming out. Like I knew about it, I heard about it, but it is a YA story and book of the month really doesn't feature YA all that heavily, all that often. And so that's why I don't even include a YA category when I'm making these predictions. And so that's why I didn't even talk talk about this one despite all of the buzz that it was getting is because I really didn't think it was going to be featured. And that book is called What the River Knows by Isabel Ibanez. But like I said, I really didn't think that it was going to be featured. So I did not talk about it. Book of the Month also did have two add-ons. One was Check and Mate by Allie Hazelwood, which again is another YA release. And even though all of her adult romances have been featured in the past on Book of the Month, I really didn't think that they were going to do her YA release. So again, I didn't talk about it. Um, and the other add-on was The Future by Naomi Alderman, which I did talk about. So out of the eight books that were featured as curated monthly selections or add-ons, I only actually actively mentioned two of those books in my November book of the month prediction video. So it was all over the place. I was definitely off the mark, but some of these I really was not expecting. And like I said, I do believe that December's book of the month selections have the ability to be the same. There were a lot of books that came out in November that I was really shocked were not featured for book of the month. I was really actually disappointed by November's book of the month selections and I skipped that box. But there are some pretty notable releases that I think a lot of people are actively anticipating for December that did come out in November, like The Mystery Guest by Nita prose, which is the sequel to her book called The Maid. Also, that new book by Erica Johansson called The Kingdom of Sweets is a distinctly Christmas book. It is like a nutcracker retelling, and I do think a lot of people are hoping that that's going to come out in December. So like I said, book of the month for December has a lot of potential to have past releases and January releases come out, and I have no idea which way book of the month is going to go. And even though there are not really very many strong releases coming out in December, I'm really hoping that they do have some good options. So we're going to go ahead and get into December's book of the month predictions, and as typical, I do have have all of my predictions sorted into five main genre categories. And typically I have to limit myself to five books per category in order to make it a little bit more challenging. But in all honesty, I don't think any of these categories even have five total. That is how limited the releases are for December. And I really had a hard time determining out of all of the releases coming out in December, what I thought could be potentially strong contenders for book of the month versus what I just wanted to talk to you about in my new release video. But anyway, I'm going to shut up. I'm going to stop rambling and we are going to start with December's predictions. Now, before we get into the categories, there is a book that it's not 100% confirmed as an add-on, but it's highly likely according to my sources that it's going to be an add-on. So I want to go ahead and talk about it here. It is a book called Alice Sadie Celine by Sarah Blakely Cartwright. It is a book that comes out at the end of November. This is going to be like a literary fiction that is kind of controversial overall. It is again something that I had never heard of before. It wasn't on my radar even for the November book of the month predictions. So this is kind of coming out of left field, but I have heard that there is a strong possibility that this could be featured. And so I just wanted to go ahead and mention it in case you are interested. I'm not going to go into the full synopsis, but essentially, 
essentially it follows main characters Alice and Sadie who have been best friends since high school and Celine is actually Sadie's mother and I believe this book is about an affair between Celine and Alice. So Celine is having an affair with her daughter's best friend. It's definitely not something that I would be picking up but like I said I did want to mention it because I have heard that there is a possibility that it could be featured as a monthly curated selection or add-on for December in book of the month. All right and then as per usual we are going to start with the mystery thriller horror category for my book of the month predictions for December and we are going to start with The Engagement Party by Darby Kane. Book of the month has featured Darby Kane in the past. I believe they featured two of her previous releases and both of them I enjoyed. The Replacement Wife and Pretty Little Wife. I did enjoy them immensely. I did not enjoy her recent release quite as much but I'm still willing to read more from her in the future just because I have enjoyed how she can craft a story in the past. This says it's supposed to be a combination of And Then There Were None and I Know What You Did Last Summer and I'm just fully intrigued by that. Emily Hunt went missing from her affluent liberal arts school on graduation weekend. Her body was found floating in a river and a quiet loner who most people on campus really didn't know committed suicide. A tenuous link, one text, bound the two dead students together and was enough for law enforcement to close the case. But they got it wrong and now someone is determined to set it right. Twelve years later, college friends gathered to celebrate an engagement over a long overdue getaway on a swanky private island in Maine with only one way in and one way out. Sierra Prescott invited as a guest and unconnected to past events as the only person who soon senses not all is what it seems. The tension in the air is ignited when they find a dead man in the trunk of a car with a note. Time to tell the truth. And things only get worse. As a torrential storm strands them together, the group's buried stories begin to surface and secrets are bartered. To survive this deadly party, they'll need to stop a killer before they become prey. So there are definitely a lot of really popular tropes going on in there. We have kind of like an isolation setting as they are kind of stranded during a storm. I'm sure that like electricity is going to be gone. Phones are going to be gone. Um, and then of course we do have and, and then there were none tropes. So I assume some of these people are going to be picked off one by one over the course of this time. And then we have I Know What You Did Last Summer where somebody knows what they did and they want the truth to come out. So I'm actually highly intrigued by that premise. Like I said, I have enjoyed Darby Kane in the past and Book of the Month has featured Darby Kane in the past. And I would love to see this be an add-on or curated selection for the month of December. The next option for this category is a book called The Other Mothers by Catherine Faulkner. It says, when a young nanny dies under mysterious circumstances near new mom Tasha's home, she is certain that this could be the story to relaunch her journalism career. Meanwhile, she also needs to find a local playgroup for her son. Nearby is the gorgeous neighborhood filled with wealthy and friendly families, stunning houses and lavish play dates. But when another young woman is found dead, it's clear there's much more to the community than meets the eye. And the more Tash investigates, the more she's led uncomfortably close to the mother's and her son's playgroup. Are these women really her friends? Or is there another more dangerous reason why she has been accepted into their exclusive world? Who exactly is investigating who? So it sounds like we might have some rich people behaving badly. We have a group of potentially sinister mothers who may be committing crimes and killing people. I don't know. But this is certainly one that has been kind of going around that is being released in December. And so I thought, why not? I'll go ahead and add it here for the mystery thriller horror category for Book of the Month in December. Another release that is coming out in December by an author that has been featured on Book of the Month before is a book called The Last Caretaker by Jessica Strausser. This says Katie's divorce was, in a word, humiliating. So when her friend Bess offers a fresh start, a residential caretaking job at a nature preserve, Katie accepts. No matter that she's not exactly a nature person, how hard can it be? But from day one, something feels off. Katie's new farmhouse looks as if the last caretaker barely moved out at all. When a frantic, terrified woman arrives late at night, expecting a safe place to hide, it's clear caretaking involves way more than Katie bargained for. Katie can't tell who she can trust. The brooding groundkeeper, the daily regulars, hikers, dog walkers, bird watchers, photographers, even Bess. As Katie digs deeper for clues and what the last caretaker left behind, she must discover courage she never knew she had and decide how much she'll risk to do the right thing. Overall, kind of sounds a little basic, kind of sounds a little big. I'm not sure what we're going to get out of the story. Of course, there are going to be secrets that are uncovered, lies that are going to be revealed. But if you liked, not that I could tell, I believe that's the name of her previous book. If you liked that book, you might want to check this one out if it comes out, whether or not it is featured as a book of month selection. Like I said, I did want to mention it here because she was a featured author in the past. And then the last book that I want to talk to you about in this category is a book called The Vacation House by Jane Shelnut. It says, two women, two secrets, one terrible night. Paxos, Greece. The Vacation House is a luxurious getaway for a wealthy English family. Windows open to sun and the sea, a sparkling swimming pool, and a verdant garden. One hot summer night, while the parents and their friends drink wine and amuse themselves, a young woman, the teenage daughter of the Greek caretaker, ventures for a walk on their private beach. Her life will never be the same again. London, England, 10 years later. Julia is the perfect spouse and mother. Slender, blonde, expensively dressed, she's the classic yummy mummy of high cook, organizer, arm candy, and speechwriter to her influential husband. But behind her winning smile is a stifled woman trapped in a gilded cage, stricken with anxiety and perfectionism. When Julia meets Laurel, a therapist who promises to help her find fulfillment, Julia opens herself up to the hope of a different future. What happened in Greece all those years ago that binds these two women together? And will uncovering the truth destroy everything or set them free? The Edgar-nominated number one internationally best-selling author of The Daughter and the Playground weaves a breathtaking tale of betrayal, family, and secrets from the past in this crackling novel of psychological suspense. 
So this is actually an author that I've never heard of before, but it sounds like she has written some popular releases in the past. I don't believe that she has ever been featured on Book of the Month, but this is another notable thriller release that has been going around for December. So I do think that it could be a contender basically as any of these will. So those are the four that I wanted to mention in this category. We are going to move on into the romance category for which I have three, starting with The Gentleman's Gambit by Evie Dunmore. So this is actually the fourth book in her A League of Extraordinary Women historical romance series. I do know that Book of the Month has featured at least the first two. I don't remember about the third one. I think they might have, I'm not sure. But if they have, if they featured all of the past three, it's highly likely that they would also include this fourth one. I'm not really going to say much about the story or read the synopsis just because it is the fourth book. I do believe that they are companion novels though, so you might not necessarily need to read them in any particular order. But just to stay safe, I'm not going to read the synopsis of it. But like I said, this is the fourth book in a series that Book of the Month has featured at least some of the books for in the past. So there is a likelihood that they could also feature this one for December. Next, we have a book called The Second Chance Year by Melissa Wisner. Sadie Thatcher's life has fallen apart in spectacular fashion. In one fell swoop, she managed to lose her job, her apartment, and her boyfriend, all thanks to her big mouth. So when a fortune teller offers her one wish, Sadie jumps at the chance to redo her awful year. Deep down, she doesn't believe magic will fix her life. But taking a leap of faith, Sadie makes her wish, opens her eyes, and nothing has changed. And then, in perhaps her dumbest move yet, she kisses her brother's best friend, Jacob. When Sadie wakes up the next morning, she's in her former apartment with her former boyfriend, and her former boss is expecting her at work. Checking the date, she realizes it's January 1st of last year. As Sadie navigates her second chance year, she begins to see the red flags she missed in her relationship and in her career. Plus, she keeps running into Jacob and she can't stop thinking about their kiss, the one he has no idea ever happened. Suddenly, Sadie begins to wonder if her only mistake was wishing for a second chance. So this book actually sounds exactly like something that Book of the Month would feature in the month of December. It's definitely got that new year kind of feeling, that vibe to it. So we have somebody who on January 1st is basically going to be able to relive their last year and kind of do things a little bit differently. So I do think that this has a probability just based on these vibes to be featured by Book of the Month. It definitely is reminiscent of things that they have featured in the past. So definitely keep your eye out for this one. I would not be surprised to see this one as a romance contender. So I actually think I'm going to go ahead and move into the contemporary slash literary fiction category because this next book that I was going to mention for romance, I think might better fit contemporary fiction rather than romance. So we're going to go ahead and just jump into this next category, starting with The Fairy Tale Life of Dorothy Gale by Virginia Cantra. This seems like it's going to be exactly like it sounds like a Wizard of Oz retelling. It's says Dorothy D. Gale is searching for a place to belong. After their globetrotting mother's death, D and her sister Tony settled with Uncle Henry and Aunt Em in Kansas, where D attends graduate school. But when D's relationship with a faculty member, a best-selling novelist, ends in heartbreak and humiliation, she's caught in a tornado of negative publicity. Unable to face her colleagues or her former lover, D applies to the writing program at Trinity College, Dublin. D's journey to Ireland leads her to new companions, seemingly brainless Sam Cleary, who dropped out of college and now runs a news agent shop, is charming and hot in a dissolute Irish poet kind of way. Allegedly heartless Tim Woodman, who stiffly refuses to take back his ex fiance seems stuck in his past and fiercely loyal Reedy Coer, who longs for the courage to tell her parents she wants to teach underprivileged girls rather than work in the family business. In a year of opportunities and changes, love and loss, Dee is mentored by powerful women in the writing program, challenging her to see herself and her work with new eyes. With her friends, Dee finds the confidence to confront her biggest fears, including her intimidating graduate advisor, who may not be so wicked after all. Faced with a choice with far-reaching consequences, Dee must apply the lessons she's learned along the way about making a family, finding a home, and recognizing the power that's been inside her all along. So yeah, that definitely sounds like like it's going to be a cute, sweet, uplifting, heartwarming contemporary about a girl who is kind of finding her way. This is another one that I've been seeing kind of going around and I think that it was cute and so I thought that I would go ahead and mention it here. Hi friends, editing Brittany here. I ended up having to remove one of my contemporary slash literary fiction options because apparently the pick came out earlier in 2023 but the paperback is coming out in December and so I didn't realize that when I was making the list. It showed up on a list of new releases and so I thought that it was a brand new release. So I'm just going to go ahead and jump into the description for the final book in this category for a book called Flores and Miss Paula by Melissa Rivero. 30-something Flores and her mother Paula still live in the same Brooklyn apartment, but that may be the only thing they have in common. It's been nearly three years since they lost beloved husband and father Martin, who had always been the bridge between them. One day, cleaning beneath his urn, Flora discovers a note written in her mother's handwriting. It says, forgive me if I failed you. Remember that I always loved you. What would Paula need forgiveness for? Now, newfound doubts and old memories come flooding in, complicating each woman's efforts to carve out a good life for herself and to support the other in the same. Paula thinks Flores should spend her evenings meeting a future husband not crunching numbers for a floundering aquarium startup. Flores wishes Paula would ask for a raise at her dollar bills retail job, or at least find a best friend who isn't a married man. When Flores and Paula learn they will be forced to move, they must finally confront their complicated past and decide whether they share the same dreams for the future. Spirited and warm-hearted, Melissa Rivero's new novel showcases the complexities of the mother-daughter bond with fresh insight and empathy. So that really just sounds like a cute, touching mother-daughter story, family drama. I can definitely relate, you know, with a mother of my own. So this is another one that I wanted to mention because I have seen it going 
going around. This is probably one of the more notable literary slash contemporary fiction picks that I have seen being discussed for the month of December. So I thought that it would be perfect to mention here. All right, y'all. And we are actually already in our final two categories. We are going to start with historical fiction. Now, this first one is actually one that I talked about for my new releases in November. And I somehow got it mistaken. I thought that it was a November release, but it's not. It's coming out on December 5th. It is called The Frozen River by Ariel Lahan. Now, off the top of my head, I do not know whether Ariel Lahan has been featured on Book of the Month before. I'm not entirely sure how confident I am that this newest release will be featured on Book of the Month, but this is probably the most notable historical fiction that is coming out in the month of December. So I thought it would be worthwhile to go ahead and mention it here. I did, again, discuss this in that new release video that I put out for November, but I will go ahead and reread the description for you here just in case you did not watch that video and you might be interested in this one. Maine, 1789. The Kennebec River freezes, entombing a man in the ice. Martha Ballard is summoned to examine the body and determine cause of death. As the local midwife and healer, Martha is good at keeping secrets. Her diary is a record of every birth and death, every murder and debacle that unfolds in the town of Hallowell. In that diary, she also documented the details of an alleged rape that occurred four months earlier. Now one of the men accused of that heinous attack has been found dead in the ice. While Martha is certain she knows what happened the night of the assault, she suspects that the two crimes are linked and that there is more to both cases than meets the eye. Over the course of one long hard winter, as the trial nears and whispers and prejudices mount, Martha's diary lands at the center of the scandal and threatens to tear both her family and her community apart. In her newest offering, Ariel Lahan brings to life a brave and compassionate unsung heroine who refused to accept anything less than justice on behalf of those no one else would protect. The Frozen River is a thrilling, tense, and tender story of a remarkable woman who had the courage to take a stand and in the process wrote herself into American history. It says it's inspired by the life and diary of Martha Ballard, and so I'm very interested in the premise of this story. It definitely sounds like there are going to be some really dark undertones, some mysterious things that are going on, two crimes that could be connected, one involving the rape of a girl and then the other of her accused rapist, and now that guy is dead. And so I'm really interested to see what is contained in the diary of Martha Ballard and what she ends up doing to try to get justice for the victims. So I really enjoyed the sound of this when I was talking about it in November. I still enjoy the sound of this now. It's one of the only historical fictions coming out in December that I really have any interest in overall, and I would love to see it featured in the historical fiction category for Book of the Month in December. And then the very final one that I want to talk to you about in this category is The Wildest Son by Asha Lemmy. When tragedy sends Delphine Aubert, an aspiring writer on the cusp of adulthood from her home in Paris, she seizes the opportunity to embark on the journey she's long dreamed, finding the father she has never known. But her quest is complicated by the fact that she believes her father to be a famed literary icon, Ernest Hemingway, a man just as elusive as he is iconic. She desperately yearns for his approval as both a daughter and a writer and convinced that he holds the answer to who she's truly meant to be. But what will happen if she is wrong or if her real story falls outside of the legend of her parentage that she's revered all of her life? The answer takes her from Paris to New York's Harlem to Havana and Key West as Delphine fights to find her own triumphant place in the world and within herself, outside of the shadow of the myths she's forged so strongly into her identity. Epically rendered as only Asha Lemmy's vivid and lyrical voice can, The Wildest Son is a dazzling and unexpected coming-of-age story about an unforgettable young woman who must come to terms with who she is and who she wants to be. So it's definitely sounds like this is a quest of the main character to kind of find herself and who she is. She believes Ernest Hemingway is her father and she's going to try to find him and figure out who he is to her and all of that stuff. So that one sounded kind of intriguing to me, a little bit different, and so I wanted to put it on y'all's radar for December. All right, y'all, and then the very final category, the sci-fi, fantasy, magical realism category, it actually only has one book and it's a book that I can't really talk too much about because it's a sequel and that is Ruthless Vows by Rebecca Ross. So her book, Divine Rivals, has been sweeping the internet. I have literally heard not one bad thing about it. I do believe that this is a YA story. So again, this is not something that I would typically feature in this video. However, they did feature Divine Rivals. And since they did that, and because of the popularity of this series, I would be really surprised if I did not see this sequel. So again, I'm not going to read anything about the synopsis of the story because it is a sequel. But I do believe Divine Rivals is kind of like a hate to love romanticy, maybe, maybe dark academia. I don't know. I haven't read anything about it, but the buzz is getting to me, y'all. I'm getting a little bit of FOMO because so many people love this book. So I might be convinced to go ahead and take a peek at the synopsis of it to see if it's something that I might like to read, even though I've moved almost completely away from young adult fiction of any kind. We'll see, but I did want to go ahead and mention that here because this is probably one of the ones that I'm most confident about for book of the month in December, but who knows? I'm kind of expecting to be completely wrong about absolutely everything. All right, everybody, that is it. Those are all the predictions that I have for the month of December. Please comment down below and let me know what you think could be featured as book of the month as either part of their curated monthly selections or their add-ons. I would love to know. And if you've made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty, but you want to let me know that you're here, go ahead and leave me a snowflake emoji or a fire emoji, like fire and ice emoji in honor of some of the historical fictions that are coming out. It means so, so much to me when you leave a comment on my channel and it definitely helps my channel so much. So I appreciate it greatly. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I aim to post one video a week, sometimes 
sometimes too, depending on what I can do. And I always love connecting with you in my videos or on any of my other social media platforms, which I always leave linked down below, along with the links to all of the books that I've discussed in this video. Until next time, guys.